Hi, I'm Eric, Lieutenant of Training here at West Metro Fire. Today, we're going to be introducing the MSA G1 Air Packs. The MSA G1s can be broke down into two basic categories, the harness and the cylinder. We're going to start with looking at the harness. At the bottom of the harness assembly built into the pack is the first stage regulator. The first stage regulator takes the higher pressure of the cylinder to around 80 PSI through the rest of the system. On one side, it has the low air warning valve that is pneumatic and uses air from the cylinder to operate that is automatically activated upon the cylinder reaching the 33% air level. On the other side, built in is the Universal Rescue Connection, or URC, which is used to quickly transfill the cylinder from another air supply in an emergency situation. The URC connection will be covered more in depth in the RIT topic. Staying on the back side of the harness, we move to the power module of the pack. This is where all the electronics are housed to operate all of the lights and displays of the pack. Also built into the power module is a white light located above the URC connection that automatically turns on when the pack has reached its low air level of 33% of the bottle to help illuminate and locate the connection. Moving to the cylinders. West Metro cylinders for the G1s are a 30 minute 4500 PSI cylinder. They are wrapped with luminescent bands and the gauge face to improve firefighter visibility. The gauge is calibrated in 100 PSI increments, meaning when the analog gauge shows 20, it is 20 by 100, giving you 2,000 PSI in your cylinder. West Metro's SOG states when bottles are being checked, if the pressure is less than 4,300 PSI, cylinders will be refilled to 4,500 PSI. The cylinders are held into the harness by two separate means. The steel band locks the cylinder at the top and the dovetail connection at the bottom. The cylinders can be loaded into the harness either from the top of the pack or the bottom of the pack. Make sure the dovetail key on the cylinder fully seats into the harness prior to the band being locked down. The G1 packs have the remote quick connection for the connection from the harness to the cylinder versus the standard CGA threads. Prior to attaching the quick connect to the bottle, make sure that the male quick connect on the bottle is finger tight. To attach the quick connect to the bottle, push the female end onto the male end until you hear and feel the connection snap together. To remove the connection, it is a quarter turn on the female end and then the connection will be able to be removed from the bottle. Attached to the remote quick connect is a pressure relief valve that will trip if there's a malfunction with the pack and too much pressure is put into the system. When completing your checks on the harness, make sure the green and orange tape is present and does not have any pinholes signifying that it was set off. All West Metro refill stations have the quick connect feature. Squad 1 has two quick connect to CGA thread adapters for the cascade system to refill other department's bottles if necessary. Turning the pack around and starting at the bottom is the waist strap and lumbar pad. Located on the waist strap is the second stage regulator and the regulator clip. The second stage regulator is a positive pressure system, meaning it will only allow airflow into the face piece when inhalations are taken. The red bypass valve on the regulator overrides the positive pressure feature of the regulator and creates a free flow of air. The volume of air is controlled by how far the bypass valve is opened. To attach the regulator to the face piece, the user must make sure the red bypass valve is on their right side and push the regulator straight into the port of the face piece. To remove the regulator, the two buttons, top and bottom of the regulator, should be depressed at the same time and the regulator removed. The regulator also houses the lights that illuminate the images inside the face piece for the HUD. It also has dual microphones built in that connect to the shoulder strap speaker. Also built into the microphone systems are algorithms that over time eliminate the amplification of inhalation noises or Darth Vader breathing. It's recommended that after you click your regulator into your face piece that you say a few sentences to help reduce the amount of time that the inhalations are heard through your speaker. The left shoulder strap is where the speaker is located. Anytime the pack is powered on, the speaker will automatically turn on. This is signified with a blue light on top of the speaker. To turn the speaker off, Click and hold the button until you hear a beep and the blue light turns off. Press and hold the button again until you hear the beep and the blue light turns back on, signifying the speaker is back on. The lumbar pad swivels on the pack to adjust to body movement for better weight distribution, balance, and comfort for the user. The lumbar pad also has a height adjustment. To move the lumbar pad, pull the silver tab behind the pad and slide it to either the upper or the lower setting. 
West Metro's SOG states the lumbar pad, when stowed away, will be in the middle position. So if you move the lumbar pad, it's the wearer's responsibility to return it to the middle position when stowing the pack. The other note about the lumbar pad is the battery cannot be removed from the harness if the lumbar pad is in the upper setting. If trying to remove the battery, it does not come out with ease, look at the lumbar pad location. Do not use any tools or excess force to pry the battery out of the harness. This will cause damage to the back plate or the battery itself. That brings us to the battery of the harness. The battery is located in the center of the back plate and powers all electronics and lights on the pack. To remove the battery, take the male end of the waist strap, insert above the battery, and remove. The battery will then be able to be taken out and changed if needed. West Metro's SOG states if the battery is at three bars or below, it will be switched out and charged. It is important to note that when cleaning the harness, a low pressure hose may be used, but the battery must be in the pack to keep water from corroding the connector pins on the harness or the battery itself. When the battery is removed from the harness, both the battery and the harness connection points need to be checked for debris and make sure that the orange O-ring is in place that prevents water and debris from entering. Note that anytime the battery is replaced, the pack will run a system check. Make sure that the pack passes the system check and turn the pack off by pressing the green button on the pass device twice. Continuing up the harness on either side of the back plate are two carry or drag handles. Each of these handles have a 500 pound static load rating. Above those on the top of the pack is the top handle rated for a thousand pound static load. It is important to note that the handles and harness are not an approved rated harness for vertical rescue of firefighters during a rope rescue. On the left side of the pack is the pouch that stows the buddy breathing hose. The buddy breathing hose is used in emergency situations, allowing firefighters to quickly and easily interconnect to a fellow firefighter's supply. When connecting with the buddy breathing system, the system will automatically transition both firefighters to breathe off the cylinder that has the highest pressure. Every hose has both a male and a female locking quick connect. Making the connection, it does not matter if you connect the male or the female, as long as you pick one from each pack and the connection is secure. To disconnect the buddy breathing hose, pull back the locking mechanism on the female connection, then separate the connections from each other. When placing the buddy breather hose back after use, replace the rubber caps, take the quick connect end, and start rolling the hose around itself, wrapping as tight as possible to ensure it fits in the carrying pouch. When closing the pouch, notice that there is both Velcro and snaps. It is important to make sure that the snaps are buttoned, as over time, the Velcro will wear faster than the snaps, and the firefighter should be in the habit of using the snaps. Located on the right shoulder strap is the Integrated Personal Alert Safety System, or PASS device. The PASS device's main function is an alert system that gives an audible alarm to help locate firefighters in emergency situations. If there is a lack of movement, the PASS pre-alarm will start to sound. To deactivate this, you simply move the PASS device to shut it off. If it goes into full alarm from lack of movement, press one of the green buttons twice to shut the alarm off. Additionally, the pass device can be activated manually by holding down on the red button. Once activated, to shut it off, it's the same as before. Press one of the green buttons twice. Also built into the pass device are analog and digital readouts of the cylinder air pressure. The digital screen will automatically turn off while it is hanging down to preserve battery life. When it's raised, the digital display will illuminate and the color will be a quick gauge of the air level. The pass device has thermal sensors built in. The sensors continuously monitor the temperature and time that the pack are exposed. The sensors are set up to trip if temperature over time limits are exceeded. Another function of the pass device is the time remaining function. While the pack is being used, pushing the green button once will cycle to the screen. Once enough air has been consumed in a work cycle, it will estimate the time remaining on the cylinder. It is important to remember that this is an estimated time left of the bottle until empty, not to the 33% low air alarm. The pass device is also where the battery levels are checked. The two ways to complete battery checks are if the pack is powered on, hold and look at the pass device on the top right corner of the digital display. If this pack is powered off, press and hold the green button until the pass device turns on, showing the battery level. Checking the battery this way will also show the serial number of the pack. All West Metro packs are identified with the last four characters of the serial number. Last is the face piece. The face piece is equipped with anti-fog and heat-resistant lenses. 
there are no batteries or electronics in the face piece, which reduces the weight and simplifies the cleaning process. Looking at the port of the mask, located on the bottom is the one-way exhalation valve. This opens to release exhaled breath and moisture buildup. Above the exhalation valve is an open port where inhaled air enters the mask when not hooked up to the regulator. Increased size allows for reduced breathing resistance. Next is the inhalation check valve. This is a one-way valve that allows the air to enter the mask when a regulator is plugged in. It does not allow air exchange with the regulator, meaning there is no cross-contamination and there is no need to decontaminate the regulator after each use. Inside the mask is the gold ring, which is the diaphragm. It allows for clearer voice communications. Above the diaphragm is the heads-up display or HUD. This is where the lights from the regulator show to the wearer. On the left side of the HUD is the alarms icon. On the right side is the air level with the Buddy Breather light system. Four green lights signify 100 to 76% PSI displayed for 20 seconds. Three green lights signify 75 to 51% PSI for 20 seconds. Two yellow lights signifies 50 to 34% PSI for 30 seconds, accompanied by an audible whistle from the pack. One red light, continuously flashing, accompanied with the low air bell, signifies 33 to 0% PSI. Pushing a green button on the pass device at any time activates the lights on the HUD. Additional equipment for the face pieces are the APR adapter, which allows the user to attach an N100 filter instead of a regulator, and a spectacle kit. If the wearer uses glasses, they can be fit with the user's prescription. Now that we've talked about the components and functions of the pack, let's take a look at the operation of the pack for use in an ideal H atmosphere. To turn the pack on and fill the system with air, turn the knob on the cylinder and open all the way to charge the pack. When the system is turned on, similar to replacing the battery in the pack, it will run a system check. At this point, the firefighter is ready to connect the regulator to their face piece. To turn the pack off after use, turn the knob on the cylinder closed all the way. Once the cylinder is closed, the bypass valve on the regulator can be opened to bleed the remaining air out of the system. Once all the air has been drained out of the system, press one of the green buttons twice on the pass device, noticing the shutdown screen on the digital display. Thanks for watching the introduction to the MSA G1 Air Packs. If you have questions, follow up with your station officers or the training division. Stay tuned to the channel for more training videos.